Hello, Master Tron Tamer here. Um, I've got a fun project. Um, what we're going to be doing today um, is salvaging some information off of this cassette tape. I'm going to walk you through all the steps for doing this. Um, this is a message that was recorded um, by my aunt and uncle before they passed away. So as kind of a Christmas present, I'm going to be recovering the audio off of this tape and then distributing it to their children and grandchildren and I think great-grandchildren too. So I think that they'll enjoy that. So this might be a project that you do yourself. You've got some something recorded on these. Could be music, could be something else. Um, we're going to be using this. I did an, uh, a box opening on this with a different video. Um, it seems to be a very solid unit on playback particularly, which is what I care about. So that will be one of our components. We're also going to be using this Digit Now analog to digital converter. And I'll be putting links in for both of these. Um, if you want to use them and it, I do appreciate it if you follow those links if you do end up buying something. Um, anyways, they do make a cassette recorder that's got the capability to digitize built right into it. I didn't like that idea. You're kind of stuck with what you end up with. When you use one of these little converters, um, we basically pair that up with some free software called um, Audacity, Audacity, <laughs> say it right. And it's audio editing software. And the advantage is that when we read it in, we'll be able to clean it up, edit it, and turn it into whatever we want it to be. So that's kind of um, why I like to go that way. It does have a classic USB output, not a USB-C, so I need a little adapter because um, the brains at Apple decided that we didn't need a legacy USB connector. All right, so I think we've got it all set up and I'll kind of walk you through the whole process. But there was one thing I wanted to show you before we get going. So this particular tape was recorded in 2000, so it's 22 years old. Um, it's quite likely that you might have ones that are even older if you're trying to do this. So when the tape sits in the cassette for decades, like it has, it can actually get stuck to each other. And sometimes the um, magnetic element will start to um, flake off or the binders break, all kinds of things can go wrong. So if you take it straight like this and stick it in a player, even a known good player, you could end up with it eating the tape. And we're not going to do that because we don't want that to happen. So I wanted to show you, and this is on a different tape, what you do before you put it in the player. So it's unlikely that you have one of these. I, I don't think they make them anymore. You can find them on eBay. But what it is, it's a manual winder. It was a clever little device that somebody came up with once upon a time. And it fits right on the cassette. Um, and you can wind or rewind the cassette. And what I'm going to recommend before you put it in the player is to take it all the way through manually by hand if possible. You can do the same thing with the fast forward or the rewind in the player, but the tape can get brittle. I mean, it's basically plastic with rust glued on it. That's what magnetic media is. So it can get to be iffy. So you run it all the way through both ways and get it rewound. Now, like I said, it's unlikely you have one of these. You could hunt around for a manual cassette rewinder. That's what it's called on eBay if you like. But let me show you a trick that only people who were around when there were cassettes would know. So this is a regular um, pencil. And I have put one layer of gaffer's tape around it. It just turns out 
that that fits perfectly into these little sprocket holes. And you can do this manually. It just takes longer. And this is what we used to do when something would go wrong with our cassettes and we needed to rewind them. But um, in this case, I'm going to put this one back to the beginning. And this is not one that's got something important on it. That's why I'm doing it. I took my time with the original to make sure I got that right. Okay. It is just about at the beginning. Let me go ahead. There we go. And it's back up. So one layer gaffer's tape, also known to some as duct tape. And you can just do that manually. But I highly recommend going both ways with the tape long before you put it in to um, the player. That will greatly reduce, it won't stop it all together, but it will greatly reduce um, the chances of the tape being eaten. All right, as we used to say. Um, one other tip before we get started. Um, what's really nice about this digit nail device is it can take, and that's these um, red and white connections here, a line level input, or it can take a headphone input. So when you're working with recorders of this era, they're all going to have a headphone jack. So that's kind of a cool additional feature um, that it's super easy to interface with just about anything. All right, so I am ready to go ahead and I'm a little nervous about this to be quite honest, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the 22 year old tape into the player. It's already in the re-round position. It should be good to go. All right. Oh, I know what else I was gonna tell you. So you can go find Audacity and download that um, they have both a Windows and a Mac version. But before you start it up, plug in your microphone first, because this is going to show up in the menu as a USB mic. And you need to have that already configured for either Windows or um, Mac before you start up Audacity so that it will um, be able to detect it. So, um, on the Audacity screen, it's really straightforward. Um, here in this window, we've got to pick our microphone, and we want the USB microphone. Now, I don't know if this tape was recorded in mono and, or stereo. It was probably mono, but I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and convert it to stereo so I can take a look at it. And that's basically it. All we need to do is start up a new project in Audacity um, and play our tape and we'll be able to record it. So I'm going to be editing this later and that's usually the best way to do something like this is to go ahead and start the recording device first even though there's nothing coming out of the tape player yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've started the recording and now I'm going to go ahead and play. Now I wouldn't expect to see anything yet because there's a leader on the tape. And let's see what we've got here wave wise. So what it looks like is I've got really soft audio. Let me, um, stop this and I just want to confirm that I have what I think I have here yep so this is my uncle Frank <laughs> I haven't heard his voice in over 10 years um, and he has a very soft-spoken voice he was a fantastic guy he he was one of my mentors growing up the guy could fix anything could make anything work and um, just a gentle giant well over six foot and just the nicest guy you would ever meet 
So he's very soft-spoken. Um, so that's the first thing that we're going to adjust. I'm going to go ahead and clear this one out because we don't need it. And we're going to adjust the gain by doing the output here on the player. And yeah, make sure that's the one we want. So let's try this again. Um, I'll push play. And I'm going to increase the volume just a little bit, a little bit more. So we don't want it to start clipping. We want to hear him because he's soft spoken. But we don't want it so loud that it clips. So I think we're pretty good here. I'm, and where you want to look is up here. And as you can see, I just got some yellow. Yellow's a warning. Red is bad. That usually means it's clipping. So we're going to go down just a little so that we're not seeing any yellow. And that will be a good place where we know we can um, hear the voice, even though he's soft-spoken, but not, um, not clip. All right, so I'm going to stop it. And cancel this one and we'll now that we're all set i'm going to eject the tape and i could rewind it here but like i said i'm just nervous about tape that is this old so i'm going to go ahead and do it manually back to the beginning pop that in so that's ready to go and I think we're all set to do the actual recording um, once it's all done um, we're going to go ahead and save the file uh, and what I'll probably do because this will take a little while is kind of cut forward on that part but let's go ahead and get it started. So we'll hit record. Over here we'll hit play. Our level should be preset and ready to go. And that looks pretty good. Uh, just saw a little yellow. So I'm going to do this one more time because I have a problem with being a perfectionist. That little yellow probably is not a problem, but I want to get it right. So I'm going to turn it down ever so slightly and get it back to the beginning again. good news is the little tiny bit of audio I listened to sounded pretty good even though it was low. All right, we're going to go one more time. Hit record and push play. Yeah, I think we can live with this. So I'm going to go ahead and let it um, record the whole segment. From looking at the waveform, it doesn't look like it's in stereo, but that'll be easy to deal with in editing. Yeah, it looks like a mono recording to me. All right. Oh, there was one more thing I was going to tell you while this is going. Um, this handy dandy little device actually has an AC power cord that plugs into it. And for a lot of things that you might do with it, that would obviously be the preferred way to power it. 
Um, and that's typically how people made recordings with these old cassette players is on AC power because they were worried about the speed of the recording getting messed up. Well, there's another problem that we might run into and that is we might pick up some hum or other issues. We could get a ground loop, um, which could really mar our recording once we're on 110. And the absolute safest way to prevent a ground loop is to have both devices on their own independent battery supplies. So that's why I'm running this on battery instead of running it um, on the AC that it has. Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and let this record. And when we get to the end of it, um, we'll cut to there because otherwise we're going to end up with a very long video and I don't want to bore people. So um, we'll just cut to that. Well, I am sure glad that we went forward. Um, this ended up being a bit of a gold mine of a recording. I think there's close to an hour's worth of material on here. Um, I have now brought it all onto the computer and I've saved them as Audacity um, projects. I could at this point just go ahead and export them as audio files and use them, but I'm going to go in and give them a little bit of love and go through with some noise reduction. Um, that's also built into this software. Um, and typically you can apply um, some noise reduction and get rid of some of the motor noise um, that you'll hear. I'm going to play a, a quick piece of it and you'll hear the, um, the, the motor noise. And there's also a noise that sounds a little bit like a cricket. That's also coming from the original machine that recorded it, both the, the cricket noise and the other. But um, the good news is the, um, the voices are fine. They're very clean. Um, and if I can remove a little bit of that noise, I think we're going to end up with a really nice recording. So, like I said, uh, I think this is, we're just about done. I'm going to go back here and post-process this a little bit, clean it up. Um, one other point I wanted to make is when you, because these are oral histories, when you save out the files, you should put the year that you think that the history was recorded and the names of the people in the recording. You can put that right in the file name of the file that you save and that will preserve it. But I'm going to go one step further and this is a, a good recommendation for anybody who works with oral histories. Um, I'm going to go ahead and record an introduction um, on this audio where I say those same things. I'll say what year it was recorded and who's in the recording. I'll give their full names and their birth dates. In that way, if this recording falls into who knows what generation after I'm gone, um, they'll be able to quickly identify who it is just by playing it. And so that will give us an extra level of um, protection to save it. So this has been kind of a fun project. I found a lot more information on here than I thought we had. Um, made me kind of lonely for my Uncle Frank, to be quite honest, and my Aunt Rosemary. Um, but anyways, let's, let me play you a little clip of it so you can kind of see how it turned out. And then um, we'll go ahead and say we've finished our project. So let's play it. Ah, I knew it was going to do that. It went all the way back to the beginning. Come on here. Let me get this for you. It's so irritating. Had it queued up exactly where I wanted it. But anyway, we took him back to the doctor and went over again. Of course, you know, they put shunts in your ears now and stuff like that to relieve that. But in those days, they didn't. And so uh, we took him back and back and back and forth. And of course, all this time, too, he had that rotation of the tibia. 
So that gives you an idea of, of kind of what that sounds like. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, like I said, the voices sound fine. Now, what that tells me is that they were a reasonable distance to the recorder. But like I said, recorders, um, this one's not immune to it either. They have a lot of motor noise with this old equipment. Um, and the squeaky noises are from the tape itself moving through the machine. Alrighty. Um, I hope this has been helpful and I hope that you're able to rescue your um, oral histories if you've got some people that have recorded some for you on cassette. And um, you can use this video to see how you could convert those into um, MP3 files. Um, I probably should have shown you that part. I mean, you just click on File in Audacity here and say Export and tell it what file format you want. That's it. Um, and it will export it out. So, um, anyways, until next time, I'll see you um, in our next video.